Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi with Addicted Fishing. If you guys are new to this page, this is your first time seeing this channel, we're Addicted Fishing. Our goal is to educate, entertain, and inspire anglers like you so that you can have all this awesome fishing content of us fishing all over the world, as well as educational pieces that inspire you to go out and catch fish for yourself. Which today, this is one of those that we're doing in the educational realm. Today I'm going to go through and show you how to twitch jigs for coho salmon and I'm going to show you the techniques, the type of water and how you're going to actually use your rod and your presentation to target these awesome fish that are coho salmon. So stay tuned, we're coming at you with it right now. So what I have behind me, number one, it's one of the more atypical kind of twitching holes. The beauty and the versatility of the twitching jigs is, again, what I just said, the versatility of it. The fact that you can use these jigs in every nook and cranny of the river is what makes them so obsolete as far as from every other kind of technique that you have because you can cast just about everywhere. It's bass fishing for coho. It's bass fishing for salmon. It works for a lot of different species of salmon, not just for the coho, but that's what we're talking about today is targeting salmon that are silver salmon or coho. So what I have behind me is your first atypical run. And if you watched the tutorials before this, those, there's links in the descriptions to both tutorials that we did before this covering types of water, how to find coho, the types of jigs you want to use, and so on and so forth, and colors, scheme, size, everything else. But what we're going to do now is show you the technique of the twitch. So this is how to twitch for coho. What I have behind me is, like I showed you in the last tutorial, one of your more atypical runs. You have a nice steady current. This is a pretty big river, but these, these techniques stand and are, are relevant in any kind of river, whether it's small or large, and how you're gonna use your twitching techniques to counteract the current and also casting into slow water and so on and so forth. So what I have behind me is your atypical, basically, kind of coho run. You have a nice steady current, you got structure on the far side, you got a big back eddy, as well as fast moving current coming out of a, a quick ripple. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start at the top on this hole in particular. I'm gonna show you guys kind of my run through and how I wanna use my technique in fishing each one of these spots and how you're gonna present your jig a little bit differently in each one of them to be effective. So what I have on here is I have a half ounce mustad twitching jig. I have my 7.6 guide select pro twitching rod again fast action you can use a lot of different kinds of rods for this but you got to make sure they're shorter under eight and a half feet and fast action anywhere from eight to 15 pound line rating you don't want that light rod or that long rod because it takes away all your sensitivity the key to being effective with this twitching is to get your jig close to the bottom move it along near the bottom right in front of those fish and then bring it back in so to be able to do that effectively, you're gonna to have to reel a certain way and you're gonna to have to jig a certain way given the kind of run that you're fishing. So what I have here in front of me, again, is, is basically in my mind a perfect coho run. What I'm gonna do whenever I come up to a fishing hole is I'm gonna kind of observe. First, especially with the coho, they're very showy. They like to jump, they like to splash, they like to let you know that they're there. So that being said, walk up to the run, scan over the whole thing and kind of get an idea of where those fish are gonna to be to where you wanna start. Me, I always start at the head of the run and I take two steps for every three or four casts and I work my way all the way through the run so that I can mathematically effectively cover the entire thing. And what that's gonna do is allow you to not miss any spots and really what it does is allow you, allows you to learn that hole dynamically to where you know where the rocks are, you know where the stumps are, you know where the ledges are, and cover it to when you come back to that hole, you know where to start. And you know how to effectively fish it right off the bat because you fish the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do with my twitching setup here is I'm gonna start, and again, how I always preach, I always, always, always preach in all my tutorials, you start close, you go to the middle, and then you cast far. 90% of the people I know and clients I have throughout the year are gonna walk up here and they're gonna cast all the way over to those logs over there and start their drift. What they're doing when they do that is passing up every single coho that could be within this reach right here. If you cast it over there, your drift's gonna end down here and you're never gonna effectively fish the water in front of you. So as I make my first cast about 30 feet out, it's crucial that you find the bottom. What you don't wanna do is just sit here and wait. You don't wanna wait for it to hit the bottom and then bam, you're snagged. What you wanna do is get that line taut, make short, short, choppy strokes so that you can find the bottom and then go into your twitching motion and given the amount of current that you have in front of you is gonna dictate the kind of motion that you have. So the resistance of the bottom against your line is gonna make a lot different motion of your jig than you think it will. So the key is to let that jig fall farther than you make it rise because the fall is when those fish are gonna bite it. 
coho are very predatory. They're like the sharks of the, of the salmon world. When they see something dying, their instant instinct is to react and kill it because it's dying. It's it's weak. It's it's hurt. They want to kill it. They've been doing it their entire life since they were a little baby. They've been chasing down things that didn't look like they were healthy and eating them. So that's what we want to counteract with this twitching jig. Whether you're using a hoochie, whether you're using any kind of other other lure or or jig that you're going to have on the end of your twitching setup you're going to want it to fall farther than you're making it rise and what i mean by that is you don't want to be doing this this is an in, improper jig motion where i'm sitting here doing this all day when i see people doing this all day and they're raising their rod up above their head and they're never letting that jig sink every time that they jig they're reeling at the same time and they're bringing that jig further in the water column it's very crucial to stay inside your box you want to keep that rod tip from your belly button to about a foot above your eyes and no, never in between that or never, uh, excuse me, outside of that box. Keeping it inside that box allows you to get that good twitching motion and it allows you to have a lot of sensitivity in your rod and your braided line so that you can feel the bottom without lifting too far and letting it fall too far and really having no sensitivity or feeling within your line connected to your jig. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to cast out about 30, I'm going to cast a little bit further on this one, right out about 90 degrees. And you see how I'm reeling about a half turn every time I make this jigging motion. And what I'm doing by that is I'm sucking up some of that line so that I get an effective jigging motion without it falling down to the bottom and not being able to feel my line. What you notice each time I'm doing this jigging motion is that I'm laying that little, that se about seven feet. Every time you lift this rod straight up in the air, you're lifting it about seven feet because that's about how long of a rod you have. So every time I'm lifting that rod, I'm going to lay some of that line back on the water, about 15 feet of it, and let that jig fall. If I feel bottom, I'm going to take a couple more cranks. But you can see as my jig has started to move into the current stream, I don't need to even reel anymore because that jig and that line is being pulled by the current. I want to keep it at that same depth that I started at and I want to jig that jig all the way in to the bank here. And this is more so going to go for a moving type run like we have here in front of us. Now what I'm going to do, now that I've covered this in close and I've used my jigging motion to find the bottom, is I'm going to start bombing over into this back eddy here. And this is going to be a completely different style. This is going to be two kind of different ways you're going to be able to fish a run like this and then move on and keep moving down the bank. So now that I've hit this inside, I've made some good presentations, I know I hit bottom, I'm going to start casting further and further with each cast before I start moving down. So now I'm gonna cast clear across, almost trying to hit this back eddy. You see how, this is what we call a back eddy, where this water is a nice steady current on this side. That side of the river is all stagnant and slow. Coho love that slow water. So it's very crucial to be sure to get these jigs into that slow water where really they're designed for. So now I'm gonna bomb one all the way across the river. And this is gonna be a different motion. I'm gonna let that sink to the bottom or where I think I found bottom, just using small jig, small jig lifts so that I can feel when I finally hit those rocks. There we found it. And now I'm going to start doing my jigging motion. And as I bring that jig into that fast current, I'm going to start doing smaller and smaller jig presentations because the current is grabbing my line and causing each lift to be more effective on that jig. So each lift that I make, even though it's small, with the counteraction of that current, the jig is going farther up in the water column. So I got a little belly in my line. I'm going to suck some of that line up and I'm going to keep that jigging motion going all the way down through until it finishes in close to the bank here. And now I'm gonna bring it in. So, I pretty much covered the top of this hole. Now what I'm gonna do is with, since I'm using this twitching jig and I'm casting a long ways, I'm gonna move down river and start covering some of the rest of this hole. So walk with me. I'm gonna take about four or five steps down and I'm gonna start just like I did in the beginning. I'm gonna start about 30 to 40 feet out and I'm gonna work my way across into that slow water again. So a nice little underhand cast about 30 feet out. Small little jigs until you feel that bottom come right about there's bottom and now I'm gonna go into my jigging motion again reeling about a quarter crank with each jig until the current grabs it then I'm gonna let it do its thing and slowly swing in making that same jigging technique all the way to the bank and a lot of times these fish are trained instinctually to chase these jigs down so what you'll notice a lot is you always want to fish these jigs either all the way back to your rod tip or all the way into the bank because these fish will track these jigs all the way out and as soon as they feel like it's about to get away from them they'll charge it down and grab it right next to the bank right next to the boat anywhere that you're looking for these fish that you're you know trying to catch in these kind of situations here so made my 30 foot cast i'm going to go about 50 feet out there let that thing land, let her sink to the bottom again, doing these small jigs to try to find bottom. What, what I'm trying to do when I'm doing these small jigs is I'm lifting and following that jig so that I feel that thump once it finds the bottom. 
I want to be able to detect bottom so that I can get that jig fishing in that right water column where those fish are going to be, which 99% of the time is going to be near the bottom. Again, that current's starting to take it. You can see my hands off the reel. I don't even need a jig because I know the, vibe, or the resistance of that current and that line and that jig is keeping me up. So I'm going to let it fall without reeling, swinging it in, and then I'm going to bring it back in. And using these motions and this technique to fish through runs, again, is going to make you more effective because you're covering so much water. You're not just casting into the stagnant hole and twitching it back in. You're casting it in, you're twitching it through the stagnant water, and then you're swinging and twitching it through the fast water. So keep that in mind as you go to different runs like this and find different areas to fish. We're going to move on to a different spot, show you guys a little bit different technique in a little bit faster water, and then we'll stop and fish some structure and fish a little bit slower water so you guys can see the techniques and the styles that you want to fish there. What you're going to find when you find this structure, whether it be log jams, big boulders or anything, they're either going to be in front, in the middle, or behind the structure. So what I'm going to do, either whether I'm from the bank or in my boat, I'm going to start with underhand casts. I don't want to go overhand and get too powerful with my cast and cast too far into the structure. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to identify the structure and try to use, whether you have polarized sunglasses, whether you have any kind of different ways of seeing into the water, whether you stand on a rock, stand on the structure itself and be able to look and see inside that structure, you're gonna identify the bottom and, and the snags and the different kind of things that you're gonna get hung up on before you start casting. So I see here, I got a big log laying here. I have two logs laying downriver right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with an underhand cast, again, so I don't cast too far, and I'm gonna make my presentation a lot quicker. It's not as imperative that your jig gets super deep in these situations. Again, you see how I'm using a lot snappier jig presentation. I'm gonna let it fall a lot further than I'm making it rise, jigging about two to three feet up and down each time, letting that jig fall and go right down in between that structure. Again, trying to identify where it's falling so that I'm not getting hung up. Now that I've covered the top of that structure, I'm gonna cast right in between it. I'm gonna go right in between all the logs here. Again, making a very speedy jig presentation this time so that I'm avoiding getting snagged, but still letting it fall far enough to be able to get it visually get that, those fish's attention, just like so. Got a big log here down on the river. I'm gonna let my jig fall right next to it kind of circling around, letting it fall, get down deep right next to the structure, and then I'm gonna bring it back in. Now that I've covered that bit of it, I'm gonna make my last cast to the downriver side of the structure. So you're gonna start high, go to the middle, and then cast low, given that you know exactly what that structure looks like on the bottom. So I'm gonna go down, right below, right in the little back eddy of these trees, and I'm gonna make that speedy, quick little presentation. And again, you see here how I'm not waiting for myself to find the bottom like I was in the last hole that had a lot of current. This is a very stagnant hole. This is more of your, your typical spot that you're gonna find coho schooled up in this kind of structure. So I'm gonna make it snappier. I'm not gonna let it fall quite as far. And I'm gonna make sure to get a good, good aggressive presentation so that those fish are, are eager and wanna chase that jig down and come out of that cover that they're hiding in. So last but not least, what we're gonna cover as far as types of water you wanna look for and the style of, uh, that you're gonna actually twitch in these runs is the fast water, which is by far the most technical spot that you can twitch a jig. And again, the, probably the highest variable of where you're gonna lose more jigs. But again, if you can learn how to twitch in this fast water, you'll notice how many more fish you start to catch being able to use these versatilely, using them in different kinds of water like this. You can go down the entire river and cast in every little zone without snagging up and effectively fishing. So being that I'm in a run like this, I'm gonna go with more of like a half ounce or a three eighths ounce jig, not so much the, the three quarter of the one ounce. I'm gonna use those in deeper stagnant water that I really wanna get that jig up and down and try to find bottom quicker. This, I already know where the bottom's at. I know it's gonna be shallow. I know I'm gonna have to make quick jigging motions and I'm gonna have to get it through that area fast, which is again, gonna react that good bite from those fish because they're not getting a long time to look at that jig. So you see here, coming into a nice pinch here, starts to pick up. I have a slight little back eddy on the inside, but I'm gonna start my first cast in the current. Not so much like I have in the other holes where I'm starting close and I'm working my way through. I'm gonna cast all the way across and what you're gonna see the difference in and the way I fish this is I'm gonna have a lot faster twitching motion and I'm gonna be making almost a full crank each time I go to reel. So what I'm gonna do here, I see where this water's coming down. My first guess is that a lot of these fish, again, aren't gonna be sitting on the tongue. They're not gonna be sitting on this inside in the, in the back eddy. They're gonna be sitting right in that main channel of the current where I'm gonna be able to get my jig all the way over to and work down in front of them. These are gonna be a lot shorter bursts of fishing when you're fishing this short sort of fast water. As I step into the tail out here that's moving a lot quicker, I'm gonna be fishing a lot longer. I'm gonna be casting 45 downriver and I'm gonna be jigging and twitching almost not reeling. 
but when I do this spot here, I'm gonna be reeling very fast and I'm gonna be twitching very fast so that, uh, so that I'm not hanging up on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep my cast at about 45 to 90 degrees. I'm not gonna cast way up river here. The only time I'm gonna cast way up river is gonna be in slower water. And that's always a great presentation is to cast straight up and bring it back down to those fish. But here, I'm gonna cast 90 to 45 and I'm gonna work it through quickly. So I'm gonna go far side, all the way in that main channel, and instantly I'm gonna start reeling and jigging. And what that's doing is it's allowing that jig to stay down about two to three feet in the water column, but swing through there at a depth that's good enough to get those fish's presentation, but not hang me up on the bottom. Okay, so nice and short. You see I was reeling about a full crank in between each jig there. And again, I'm keeping those jigs in my box though. I'm not going more than a foot above my head and I'm not dropping my tip past my belly button. I'm allowing that line to lay flat and I'm jigging again and reeling, jigging and reeling. So now that I've covered that spot, I'm gonna cast about 20 to 30 feet further downriver, making quick jigs, keeping in my box, reeling a full crank each time and quickly getting it through that fast water where those fish can see that jig, but again, keep me off the bottom. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move on downriver. So now that I'm down into this faster moving part of the tail out, my style and my casting direction more so is gonna change more than anything. What I'm gonna do, because I know I have all this span that I can fish, is I'm almost gonna act like I'm spinner fishing. If you've seen any of our other tutorials, my, my motto is close, middle, far, two steps. Close, middle, far, two steps. And what you're almost gonna do here, rather than casting 45 up or at 90, I'm almost gonna make a cast at 45 degrees downriver so that I have the tension of that water and against my line to be able to carry that jig along that shallow riffle without getting hung up on the bottom. If I cast up, I'm gonna have to reel too fast and jig too fast and I'm not gonna fish effectively through that portion of the run that I want to. So I'm starting here, I'm gonna go straight out, making my first cast about three quarters of the way across giving those nice short choppy jigs. And again, keeping that drift down river from you is gonna be crucial. You want that jig going up and down and almost falling right on those fish's nose. You don't want it hopping back and forth and coming towards them at an angle to where they're not gonna be able to grab that jig before you go jigging it by them. So now that I've made that cast, I'm gonna make a long cast. And what's gonna be different here on this cast is the way that I'm reeling in between each jig. I'm gonna cast far and I'm gonna make my jigs without reeling or just making a reel every two to three jigs because I have that much current pulling against my line. I wanna make sure I'm down in the water column. So I'm gonna go long cast, I'm gonna keep it at an angle. And because I made that long cast, I'll be able to jig and hardly even reel as it goes through that water column just like so because that current, again, is holding me up. I'm jigged about four times, I can take up some of that line. And again, just keep swinging and covering that jig all the way through. And the beauty of this technique is that you can cover a lot of water. Now that I've made that long cast, I'm gonna take two or three steps down. I'm gonna make that same long cast and I'm gonna sweep it all the way across that run. Because in a run like this, there's, is, there's real no definition. There's no definitive spot that those fish wanna hold. They can be behind every single one of the boulders out in this run, so the key is, is to make a presentation that covers a lot of that ground without you having to cast and move and do a lot of stuff, which is casting at that angle and swinging it across. Now that I've made those two casts, I'm gonna move down about four steps and do the same thing. Long cast across. Again, keeping that tip within your box. Jigging that thing through, making very short reels here again because now the current's got me. It's keeping my line up on the surface and it's keeping my jig up towards the surface so to keep it down, I'm not gonna reel as much. Letting that line fall in the water about 10 to 15 feet every time. And slowly ringing that jig back in. Again, fishing it all the way in towards the bank. These spots more than any is where these fish are gonna be chasing down your presentation all the way to the very last minute. So now that I've got it in close to the bank, I'm gonna reel it in and keep casting. So, Really, you guys, that kind of covers a lot of the different styles of water that you're gonna look for. Each one requires a different jigging technique, which you can go back and watch, and you can see my rod motion that I've used in each one. And it also requires different weights of jigs and different styles of jigs. So, any style of jigging or, or twitching technique is gonna work well with a lot of the presentations that we showed you in our last tutorial, which again, there's links for down in the description here. But Everyone requires a little bit different style of fishing. You can't just be a one trick pony and jig the same everywhere that you fish. So be sure to go back, watch this video again, see each little part and watch how I've jigged and I've explained to you your jigging motion. Stay within that box and go have fun with these twitch twitching jigs because it's really one of the most entertaining and exciting ways to go out and catch salmon that I've ever seen before. It's something that we've de been developing new products for and new rods and reels and line and everything over the last few years because it is that much fun. So if you guys like 
what you saw here today. Be sure, again, we said it in the beginning, go down and subscribe to Addicted Fishing if you've never done so before. Hit that little bell notification so you can see all of our new tutorials that we have coming out all the time and all of our fun fishing content from us fishing everywhere in the world. I hope this video taught you guys a lot and helps you go out and catch more fish. So stay fishy, keep fishing, and we'll see you guys out there on the river.